Hey guys, so Breaker just came out in Korea yesterday. And as a result, we have a lot more information about the different uh, engravings of the class and the different skills and also correct information because the class is actually out. We're not just making predictions or guesses anymore. So I want to take some time today to go over both of the engravings and kind of what they do in their identity. But also at the same time, I wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about the Asura form, the red stance, because that is the one that most people are playing as from what I can tell, and probably the one most people are interested in because it is kind of very unique in its play style. So let's get started. The first one we're going to talk about is Punch King. So that is the yellow stance. And that one, it's a pretty simple engraving, to be honest. So overall increases your ident your damage by 14% across the board. Um, and then it increases the identity skill duration. So when you press Z, that increases to 15 seconds. And that really is the basics of this engraving. There really isn't too much outside of that um, for the overall class. Also, this is the Hitmaster build. Um, but it also says when you're in stance, you gain three stamina and shock per second and increases your attack speed by 20%. So overall just resources and your attack speed increases. Doesn't give you move speed, so it's not a raid captain build. But, um, and this is a spec class as well. Spec um, is gonna be the main stat. Now, this engraving also changes the identity skill, right? It gives you that big old charge leap pounce kind of slam attack thing. Um, so what it does is it gives your identity skill 80% damage, 15% crit rate, 4% and 4% additional damage boost every one shock energy you have when you cast it. So the green bar, when it's full, you are doing full damage basically. Anything below that, you are not doing optimal full damage when you're using your um, Z skill. Um, so basically it's 400% damage at 100% shock energy. Um, and a lot of people just compare this to a hit master surge in many ways, uh, which I think is, you know, very good comparison. I think the damage is similar and also, um, kind of the concept is similar, right? But I say the one thing surge while this one, it's nice because it's hit master, right? So it's not like surge where you feel bad if the boss turns, you can just hit it wherever the one advantage surge does have over it is that surge is a range skill. So you can kind of just kind of throw it out from range and not be worried about, let's say there's an AOE in front of the boss, right? Or behind the boss. Um, you don't have to worry about, Oh, should I Z into that? Um, you can just throw it out and you'll get hurt. Right. Again, it's spec scaling. And then there also is a unique mechanic with the auto attacks. So there's auto attack. It's not really canceling. Let's just say auto attacks, right? So you need to weave in your auto attacks between stamina skills. So your yellow skills, <clears throat> after each yellow skill, you weave in an auto attack. It'll launch an extra hit at the end, which will reduce the stamina skills cooldown by 5%. So every one of your stamina skills will have their cooldowns reduced by 5%. And then the cool thing and interesting thing is while the Z skill does have a 40 second cooldown, it does get reset every time you enter your identity form. So let's say you are using the awakening that builds up your gauge, right? You can use your Z skill, get out of that form, use that awakening, head back into your identity form, and then you can use it again. So that's pretty cool. So that is the Punch King Kennel, the, um, the yellow engraving. That one, most people aren't really playing. I think Benji might be playing it, and he's kind of the only streamer that's really playing it. Everybody else is playing the Asuda form, which is what we are going to be focusing on today's video on, basically. Real quick, editing me so here, I realized I did not talk about how the Asuda form also scales off of crit chance. So your auto attacks also scale off of crit chance, and I wanted to make sure I said that at the front of the video so you guys don't miss out on it. Also put a text notification right about here. So Asura form is the red stance and that is the front attack stance. Now it changes your auto attack to front attack. It makes it so that your spirit, so your, sorry, not your spirit, your uh, stamina and shock energy. So the yellow bar and the green bar are going to be reduced to 70. So normally it's at hundred, right? Like here with, um, the yellow form, hundred shock energy, it gets reduced to 70. And then you get the parry on your X, right? It's a 10 second cooldown on it. There's no animation while pressing it. So you can use it while you're moving. You can use it while you're casting seals. It's super flexible, gives you a shield. That's 40% of your HP. 
and damage reduction by 20%. And this lasts two seconds. Now, this is really cool because, of course, having any class, especially with a front attack class, having some super armors, having some damage reduction and absorption, that is, you know, overall very good. Now, the interesting part with the identity gauge is that it's not like, you know, you gain more identity gauge by hitting the boss. You don't gain it with more spec stat or anything like that. The way you build your identity gauge, what lets you go into the, you know, the mura 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 form, right? That is using skills between shock and stamina. So using a shock skill and then a stamina skill and doing that kind of like transfer, right? That is what gives you your identity gauge and it's a flat amount. So it's not like, you know, you can increase with focus runes or wealth runes or spec. It's a flat amount. And they did the math out um, and it's a total of 26 skills to fill up the identity bar, including the first one. Because when you use your first skill, you're not transferring energy from either side, right? You're at max energy for both. So 26 skills to fill up the identity bar total. It's usually, you know, um, other than the first attack, if you're not doing your first attack, it's um, at full um, bar, it's 25 skills. So it takes quite a bit to transfer um, to, to build up your identity gauge. Of course, again, you have an awakening that does make it so you get full um, gauge. So that is nice, but it does take a bit to build up a full gauge. And I think we'll talk about that a little bit later when we're analyzing the class and its performance and what I think its performance is. Nobody can really tell what the performance is right now. It's only day one. All we have are Trixian numbers. And as we all know, Trixian doesn't always match up to actual performance. The other thing you get is you get 15% movement speed while in combat. So when you hit the boss with an attack, right, or a monster with attack, you're in combat. So that after you do that, you get 15% move speed, which is nice, which means you can use raid captain. Um, and then including your auto attack, right? During your red form, it gets 25 increased damage to all skills. So that is um, the kind of overall package of the Asuna form. The final thing is that you get um, a different space bar between your identity and your normal skill. I think that's the case actually too with uh, the Keno stance, yellow stance. So both of them get um, either basically refresh your space bar when you go into your identity form. Now, those are the class engravings at you know a very high level. Unfortunately, I don't have the Korean version, so I can't really test out the class myself. All I can do is watch videos, listen to other people talk about them, and then relay that information back into you. Um, so one thing I did want to do in this video, as I mentioned, is I want to go and analyze the red form performance. And I'm thinking about this in a, a certain way. So the red form, a lot of it seems to be, of course, the big thing about the form is that you get that identity and you start auto attacking really fast, right? Now that in an essence is a lot like gravity training where you have to stand still. While you don't have to stand still for as long as gravity training, it's still a good five to six seconds, I think, that you're standing still. So that can cause a lot of, I guess, ups and downs and inconsistencies and damage depending on the boss, right? Depending on the boss, depending on the fight, depending on how geared your party is and how often things are phasing, how often things get to stagger checks, things like that. So I think given that the class revolves around the identity skill, I don't know the exact breakdown of like how much damage the identity does versus like how much damage your other skills do. But <clears throat> given that your identity skill is the one that you're probably going to be using when the boss is staggered, I'm assuming it is a significant portion of your damage because you're going to be using it during burst windows, right? So let's just say it's kind of like surge in that way. And we can use those that kind of mindset to analyze some stats that I pulled from actually St. Tone's Theamine run. I chose Theamine because <clears throat> I think the other bosses that he was doing, like Akan, he was doing some ivory tower um i think those bosses are just homework at that point for a lot of people so the boss is kind of phased a lot and it's not like a natural kind of like real look into how the class performs so i looked into his performance in theamine and of course you're gonna say oh but he's level 50 something he's low level he doesn't have all the max skills true which is why for this we are actually not gonna be analyzing his damage 
but we're going to be analyzing his ability to perform his identity skill, his kind of punch, right? The, the flurry of punches, because that's what the class seems to revolve around, and that's what you want to get into as often as you can. So how well does he have uptime on those skills um, in terms of like, does the boss move a ton? Does he hit his front attacks? Things like that. So I pulled together a stat sheet of that in this next window. So there's a lot going on on the screen, but I will explain what each of these things mean. So again, this is Saint's performance in Gate 1, Gate 2, and Gate 3 of Theamine. So all these Xs with greens means that he landed a full you know, duration of his frontal flurry from his identity skill. Now that goes down to 50 to 70, well, 90%, right? Um, and that's, you know, he landed most of it, but he missed out on about like 10% of his bar. That one I'm going to count basically as 100, but I just denoted it here as 90 um, just for the sake of visibility and kind of stats. And also down here, we, we break it down. We actually use that 90 number. So this, he lands the full duration. And then the numbers means what percentage he landed. So for example, here 50 to 70 means he landed 50 to 70% of his, the duration of his identity in the front. Now, if the boss moves and you can't hit the front anymore, or if the boss moves away and you just can't hit the boss anymore, that is where those numbers come from. And that's where we cut it off, right? X means again, full duration in the front. 50 to 70 and anything, well, anything below X, anything with numbers means that he hit that percentage in the front. And it may mean that the rest of it, he either moved away or he turned his head so you're not hitting the front anymore. And zero, of course, means he hit 0% in the front. Usually it doesn't, you know, it's not that the boss moved away, but he just didn't hit the front at all. Um, and this one here with a star, it means that, you know, there was a special situation where he hit the front and then, or he tried to hit the front, but just missed. So he could have hit the front, but something happened and made it so he couldn't hit it anymore. So yeah. Um, so these are the gate one, gate two, gate three. You can see that there's multiple columns too, or rows, because those are the attempts, right? So in this situation, this was attempt number one, and then the raid wiped, and this is attempt number two. Attempt number one, number two. And the last thing I want to go over is this H letter. So that means he held his identity gauge for over 30 seconds before going into it. And I didn't want to do like, he just held it because sometimes it could be five seconds, it could be 10 seconds. I wanted to give it an actual number. He held it for over 30 seconds before he went to the ident into the identity. And that's not because of phasing. It's just because let's, you know, a lot of times you want to land that skill on the front, but there's a lot of times where the boss is moving around a ton, right? So you might not want to pop your identity and you might want to wait to use it, but at the same time, that's a reduction in damage, right? Your DPS goes down when you do that. So I made note of that to denote that, yes, he did get his identity off, but he had to hold his identity for a good 30 plus seconds. Now, that is this chart above, right? And hopefully that makes sense. This table below is to give a little bit of numbers and stats behind this chart. It's not a science, of course. I'm not a stats major or anything, so it's not a perfect science. Like, it's just something that made sense to me in my head. So how this works is this number um, value is out of the number of times he uses his identity. And I didn't count these um, these pools where he they, they wiped. So this number right here is how many is based off of how many times he used identity. So up here, he used six times. So that's out of six. He used it eight times here, out of eight. And now the number on the numerator, the top number, what that is, is the value that I gave and the score that I gave him based on his performance. So I give this a full one, X's get a full one, right? So if he lands all six of these as X's, he gets a six out of six. Now these ones, I gave a number value to that is below one. So 10 to 20, I just put it in the middle and it's like 15, right? So I did 0.15 for this one. Now for 50 to 70, I put it in the middle again, around the middle, 0.65. So again, it's not a perfect science, but it is what it is, right? And then for these ones, when he held, I have the value of those. So normally 50% would get a 0.5 value, 
but because I have it, it gets a 0.25 value. So again, if he lands 100% on all of these, he gets, you know, six out of six for this first one, right? And then the percentage will be 100. And if he lands anything below that, I just gave it a decimal value. So for the first gate, I gave it a 3.45. So one plus one, two, and this is 0 0.15, 0 0.65, 0 0.650, right? That adds up to 3.45% or 3.45 out of six. And you could say, I'm going to equate that to like, let's say landing 57.5% of your attacks, right? So that is a pretty low number. We can think about it even as like, you can think about it as surge, right? Because that's a lot where your burst is, much like Surge Deathblade. Again, it's not a perfect one-to-one, -one, but that's kind of how I've been thinking about it. It's as though it was like a surge, right? So you can think about this as you landed 57.5% of your surges in the back. So you landed 57.5% of your front attacks for your identity in the front. That's pretty low. If you think about a person who's only landed 50% of their surges in the back, that's a low number. 76.363 for gate two, that's better. It's not ideal, but it's better. And then 84.55, I'd say that's about an average performance for most people. Um, and honestly, it's a pretty good number, right? Ideally, you wanna land surge a little bit more in the back, but you know, it is what it is. Sometimes it just, you just don't get it that way. So that's how we broke it down. And as you can see, there is a range of how well he performed. And that is based off of basically the gate. If you watch his performance on, like if you watch the VOD, right? You'll see that gate one and gate two, the boss moves a lot. And in gate one, I believe ATK had some part in playing this and making the boss move a little bit more, but that kind of is an average pug run, right? That's an average run. A lot of people don't pay attention to mechs and will just make the boss spin around a lot. So because of this, I would say that the red stance is probably not, I mean, this is probably no surprise to anybody, it's probably not the stronger build. I think most people, if they want to go for min-max damage, they should go for the yellow build because it's so variable on whether or not you can hit your front attacks on your identity because if the boss even moves just a little, just turns, right, in that five to six second window, then you're just going to miss your front attacks and you lose out on a lot of damage. So that's kind of what I got from watching Saint play Famine. And I think there's a lot of videos floating around of like these people doing crazy numbers in like a con, right? And those types of raids where the boss is very stationary for the most part. So in a real raid scenario where it's not like a boss that's just standing still all the time with a boss that is not on a homework farm, like these are some of the actual numbers that we're getting from the Asura stance. And overall, I'd say they're middling. So again, we'll have to see as the, you know, we progress, of course, people are going to get better at the class, right? It's day one. We can't exactly say like, oh, they're not performing that well with it. Well, maybe it's because it needs more practice, right? So, <clears throat> but these are just some raw numbers that I wanted to pull together and analyze with you guys today and talk about just so, you know, as we learn more about the class, we'll learn more about which engravings better. I'll keep on updating you guys with kind of like observations and learnings from this class, just to keep you guys, you know, in the know, right? Because I'm looking forward to playing this class and I want to play this class. So I want to pick an engraving that makes sense. Now that might not be damage for all of us and for me, it definitely isn't. I'm probably going to pick Asura regardless because it's cool, but it is what it is, right? So there it is. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this helped you guys out in learning a little bit more about the class. And yeah, maybe I'll do a kind of analysis on the yellow engraving as well. If I can find a good streamer that represents the yellow build because not many people are using it, but okay. As always, let me know down in the comment section below what you think about this red engraving. Do you think my kind of analysis is correct? Do you think that I'm kind of overblowing some things? Because it definitely is possible, right? Like I said, it's, I'm not doing this like a science. Um, and let me know which engraving you're going to choose and play. Um, but yeah, also remember, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit that sub button, ring the bell to notifications. And also, 
I multi-stream on both Twitch and YouTube at 10 p.m. PST every night. Um, though this week, I'm actually going to be gone from Friday to Sunday. So there's that. But 10 p.m. PST every night. Um, Twitch.tv slash soup. All right, guys. If I don't see you guys there, I'll see you all on the next video. Peace out.